In today's episode, we go over some of the most gruesome alligator attacks on humans ever recorded. From swimmers being devoured in the Australian rivers to an elderly woman snatched from the edge of a pond, these are some of the worst alligator attacks on humans you'll ever hear. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Welcome to Final Affliction. Wild animals are always fascinating. From rare species of birds to the sight of a truly magnificent beast such as a lion, there is simply something that captures our attention with these creatures and has us wanting to know more about them. However, there are some animals that fascinate us more than others. And what could be more intriguing than a creature which has changed very little since prehistoric times? With their razor-sharp teeth and almost prehistoric-like eyes, alligators truly are one of the world's most wondrous creatures. But much like their ancestors before them, they are also incredibly dangerous, something Cynthia Covert failed to realize. 58-year-old Cynthia Covert lived in Johns Island in South Carolina in the United States of America. She was a nail artist and had worked in her profession for many years. The woman loved to spend her days gossiping with her clients over the latest celebrity news or offering them advice for any problems that they might have been facing. Overall, it seemed like Cynthia was living a fairly normal life with a fairly normal routine which she found comfort in. However, in 2020, something happened worldwide which no one was prepared for. A virus spread through the world, causing chaos in its wake, which led to people all over the world finding themselves suddenly uprooted from their normal daily routine and thrust into unknown circumstances, which left them feeling unsure of what to do next. Sadly, Cynthia was one of these people who suddenly found herself unemployed. Because a health crisis was declared, her salon was forced to shut its doors, and Cynthia was left with no source of income and with no clue when her salon would be able to open up again. Deciding that she wasn't going to simply sit around and wait for all of her savings to run out, Cynthia began to see some of her clients in their own homes. She thought that it would be a good way to earn a little bit of money whilst maintaining a form of social distancing. One of her clients was a woman named Barbara Howell, who lived on Kiawa Island. The sea islands of which Kiawa and John's Islands are a part of are a chain of tidal and barrier islands on the Atlantic Ocean coast off of the southeastern United States. Being a series of various sized islands and being located near to the ocean, this means that there are various different animals which inhabit the waterways between each piece of land. One of these animals is the American alligator. This animal is the only crocodilian native to South Carolina. They can live up to 60 years and can grow over 13 feet in length. It was once listed as a federally endangered species due to hunting and encroachment onto their habitat. However, populations have rebounded and the alligator's status has been upgraded from endangered to threatened. In fact, Populations of alligators in South Carolina have done so well in terms of increasing their numbers that officials decided to instigate a hunting season back in 2008 to try and keep the population under control. On the day that Cynthia went to Barbara's house to do her nails for her, there was one of these alligators resting in the pond in the backyard of the home. Thinking nothing of it at first, Cynthia and her clients settled down on the porch in the backyard where the nail artist began to do her job and shape Barbara's nails the way that she wanted them. However, from the very moment that Cynthia walked through the front door, Barbara felt as if there was something off with the woman's behavior. The 58-year-old woman seemed to be very talkative that particular day, and she was acting a bit strange as well. Barbara then went on to clarify that usually Cynthia would act very professionally whilst she was at the salon. But when she turned up to her home that day, the woman was acting very relaxed and excited as she told Barbara all about her boyfriend and how he was traveling from Tennessee to visit her. Whilst doing Barbara's nails, Cynthia also had a glass of wine, although Barbara couldn't be sure if the woman had potentially consumed a stronger substance before turning up at her home as she simply thought that Cynthia's behavior was too out of the ordinary for her to be completely sober. However, seeing as the nail artist hadn't done anything besides talk a bit more than usual, 
Barbara decided to carry on with her appointment, under the impression that Cynthia would simply go back home once she was done and hopefully sleep off whatever was affecting her. However, little did Barbara know what would actually happen only moments later. After finishing off her client's nails, Cynthia once again looked over to the pond, only to notice that the alligator was still there. She became fascinated with the creature and decided that she wanted to get a closer look at it. So, whilst Barbara cleaned up the porch from the remnants of her nail appointment, Cynthia began walking over to where the alligator was resting in the pond. The 58-year-old took out her phone and began taking photos of the animal, trying to get the best possible image that she could. With every picture that Cynthia took, she inched ever closer to the alligator and the edge of the pond. Upon noticing where her friend had disappeared off to and how close to the dangerous animal she had gotten, Barbara quickly called out to her to back away from the alligator as it had snatched a deer from the exact spot that she was standing only a few days previously. Scoffing, Cynthia apparently replied to Barbara, telling her that she wasn't a deer before the nail artist then tried to touch the deadly reptile. In the next few moments, everything seemed to happen in a blur. Having seen what Cynthia was about to do, Barbara's husband had charged out of the house to try and grab the woman before it was too late. However, within seconds, the alligator had turned and snapped its jaws around Cynthia's left leg and had begun to drag her into the pond. Shocked at what was happening, Barbara had let out a horrified scream. However, oddly, Cynthia apparently didn't make a sound even as the alligator dragged her into the water and clamped down on her leg. Hearing the commotion, one of Barbara's neighbors ran over to the house to see what was going on. Upon witnessing the scene, the neighbor then grabbed a rope from his house, which he threw into the pond for Cynthia to grab a hold of. By this point, the woman was waist deep in the water and as she held onto the rope, which her friends were using to try and pull her to safety, she apparently spoke in a calm manner. I guess I won't do this again. Sadly, try as they might, Barbara, her husband, and the neighbor simply weren't strong enough to break the alligator's hold on Cynthia's leg. Then, once the reptile was far enough out into the pond, it began going into a death roll. This is a maneuver in which a crocodile or alligator rolls over with its prey in its jaws to bring its prey underwater and drown it. With nothing else that they could do, Barbara called the emergency services. Within a few minutes, police deputies and firefighters arrived at Barbara's home where they charged into the backyard in order to help in any way that they could. Initially, they saw no movement in the water from either the alligator or Cynthia. But after about 15 minutes, Cynthia's body resurfaced with the alligator still holding on to her leg. Thinking quickly, one of the deputies shot the alligator, forcing it to release Cynthia. She was then quickly pulled to shore where, thankfully, emergency service workers were able to see that her body was intact. However, she did have severe injuries to her left leg. By this time, paramedics had also arrived at the scene and quickly whisked Cynthia away to the hospital. Sadly, she was declared dead shortly after arriving at the hospital, with the initial cause of death being drowning. This sadly marked the third alligator-related death to have happened in South Carolina within four years. And whilst it is not known exactly why Cynthia was acting so strange that day and why she decided to approach a known deadly animal, her passing was still a tragedy which greatly upset those who knew and loved her. It's important to remember that it is better to appreciate nature from a safe distance as a wild animal could attack without notice, which could result in severe injury or, in the worst case scenario, meeting your terrifying final affliction. It was the 13th of November, 2015, and Matthew Riggins was up to no good. He had turned to a life of crime to survive on his own in Palm Bay, Florida. And on this particular night, the 22-year-old told his girlfriend that he was heading to Barefoot Bay to burgle some properties there. He anticipated he would be out most of the night, collecting his haul from several of the houses in the area. He would likely be back in the early hours of the following morning. He knew what to do, and he knew what to expect. But this time, things were different. This time, he hadn't anticipated the obstacles that stood in his way. Not just law enforcement and eagle-eyed locals, but an apex predator out on the hunt in the darkness. 
He met up with one of his friends, his accomplice, and the two of them headed to Barefoot Bay, a 20 minutes drive away. This is a residential community located in Brevard County, Florida. It is situated along the eastern coast of the state. This residential area is a popular destination for retirees. Many Americans and Canadians have holiday homes there, which they visit during the cold winter months that occur further north. The warm tropical climate of Florida offers a relaxing break from these harsh winters. Late that night, Matthew and his friend worked covertly to scout out the best properties to burgle. They dressed in black, kept their voices low, and watched for movement inside the homes within the community. But the two men weren't stealthy enough, and they were spotted by a number of residents. It was late, and their behavior was suspicious as they walked up and down the streets dressed in all black. As they walked up and down to Kesta Drive, sheriffs received emergency calls about the pair. Locals said the men were acting suspiciously and thought they were likely to be burglars. Officers were immediately dispatched to the community, and they turned up at the scene at around 2 a.m. There had been previous burglaries in the area, and they were intent on catching these two suspects. A helicopter was deployed to Barefoot Bay, along with the police canine unit on the ground, to track the men down. Sweeping through the neighborhood, officers spotted the two suspects on Royal Palm Boulevard. Realizing the police were onto them, the two men fled. It was easier if they went their separate ways to avoid capture, and the pair split. Whilst on the run, Matthew found a dark corner and hunkered down. He took out his phone and called his girlfriend. He was sure he was going to get caught. He let her know that he was being chased, that the dogs were onto him, and that he may not make it back to her that night. He told her that he would lay low for a little while until the heat of the chase had died down. That was the last time she spoke to Matthew. In an attempt to throw the dogs off his scent, Matthew headed for the water. It was a large lake known to locals as Barefoot Bay Pond, but most bodies of fresh water in Florida are known to be home to alligators. There are said to be 1.3 million alligators in Florida and they reside in each and every county within the state. Visitors enter the water at their own risk, but in the heat of the chase, it's probably the last thing Matthew would have thought about as he decided to jump into the shallows. He had made a fatal error. As flashlights scanned the nearby streets and alleyways, Matthew scurried down the banks surrounding the pond and waded into the water. He felt the coolness engulf his legs, sending a shiver through his body. He crouched down behind some vegetation. His eyes were wide as he peered through the darkness, back towards the houses. His heart was racing, the adrenaline from the chase coursing through his body. Hiding in the water was his best shot at not getting caught by the police. The sniffer dogs would lose his scent. No one would guess to look for him in the water. But he was in even more danger now than before. A silent predator lay only feet from where Matthew crouched down. He hadn't noticed it in the darkness. Only nostrils and two gleaming eyes would be seen above the waterline, its tail propelling its body under the surface. Matthew was oblivious to the imminent attack. An alligator can detect its prey in murky waters or under the cover of darkness. It uses sensitive pressure sensors on its snout to detect vibrations in the water. These touch sensors, which center around their face and jaws, are more sensitive than human fingertips. They allow the animal to hone in on its prey with precision and high accuracy. This particular alligator measured 11 feet, or 3.4 meters long. Within seconds of Matthew entering the water, the alligator moved in for the kill. It grabbed the young man by his legs and pulled him from the shallows. Matthew cried out in pain, at first thinking it was a police dog. He scrambled to try and pull himself out of the water, but the reptile was too strong. Officers on the chase heard his desperate cries, but they couldn't locate them in the darkness, and they didn't know who they belonged to. As Matthew fought to stay above water, he grew weaker. The alligator had closed its jaws around his legs with a bite force of over 2,000 PSI. There was no way Matthew was getting out of its vice-like grip, and he was dragged underwater. 
His lungs were bursting, his body was fading, and less than a few minutes later, he was dead. The alligator pulled Matthew's limp body through the water. Alligators are opportunistic hunters. They typically consume prey that they can eat with one bite. Birds, fish, turtles, and small mammals such as muskrats and kopu are typical prey, but they can also take down deer and occasionally black bears. For larger prey, they usually attack by holding onto the animal and taking it underwater. They will perform a death roll, tearing off bite-sized chunks. Officers didn't catch either man that night, and when Matthew failed to return home, his family grew worried. They reported him missing later that day. However, it wasn't until 10 days later that Matthew's body was spotted floating in the murky waters of the pond. It had been severely mauled and partially eaten. It was missing its lower extremities and one arm. Next to Matthew's body was an incredibly aggressive alligator. It tried to attack divers when they approached, threatening them with its jaws wide open. It had made its kill, and now it was defending its cash. When officials reported the aggressive alligator, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission were called to the scene. Considering the danger the alligator posed to the public, they had no choice but to euthanize it. They brought in an expert trapper to capture the alligator and to kill it. They knew they had caught the right alligator. When they opened the alligator up, they found human remains consistent with Matthew's injuries, including a single hand and a foot. It is thought that Matthew drowned before being partially eaten by the animal. This is what alligators do with large prey. Matthew's accomplice and friend, who was with him that night, was caught by police and questioned. He refused to cooperate with officers and couldn't provide any further details into Matthew's tragic demise out of fear it would link him to the burglaries. He was released without charge. Over the last 10 years, Florida has averaged eight unprovoked bites per year that are serious enough to require professional medical treatment. Countless pets have fallen victim to the gators in Florida as well. Some may say that what happened to Matthew was karma for his crimes, while others will say that no one deserves to experience such a terrifying final affliction. Before we get to the fate that befell Shizuka Matsuki, we need to take a look at the circumstances that led the 47-year-old to that particular pond on June 8, 2018. Shizuka loved her home in Florida. Ever since their family moved to the United States from Japan, she'd been entranced by the stunningly wild nature of the Everglades. When her son, Katana, was still a schoolboy, they'd go off looking for turtles that got stranded on busy roads to bring them back to the safety of the water. She was an avid bird watcher, loved to fish, and she brought every hurt, lost, or abandoned animal home that she came across in her many trips out into the swamps. In the years since Katana had gone off to college, she'd acquired three rescue dogs, Junior, Paco, and Momo. Paco was a pit bull, who was so violent that he was set to be euthanized, but under Shizuka's care, he'd become a lovable cuddle bug, hell-bent on drooling his beloved mistress to pieces. She often joked that if she ever won the lottery, she'd spend all of the money on opening an animal sanctuary so that she could save every animal in Florida. The neighborhood that she and her husband, Yokio, lived in was not the safest or friendliest one. Even though their closest neighbors adored the Matsukis, Shizuka had met some very attacks when she was out walking her dogs at the surrounding ponds and streams. Once, a woman even tried to run over Momo with her car. After this incident, Yokio insisted that Shizuka stop walking their dogs anywhere near these hostile areas. So she started loading them into her car and driving a mile or two away to walk them in safer places instead. This arrangement went very well for quite a few months. Shizuka enjoyed the unfamiliar scenery and the opportunity to run across some new critters and creatures. That is, until April. A handful of gator sightings made the rounds as people shared photos and video footage they'd captured on their phones. One behemoth alligator was spotted, a 12-foot monster that had taken up residence in Silver Lake's Rotary Nature Park. 
Since he knew that this park was an area his wife liked to frequent, Yokio advised her to stay away for the time being, at least until he got back from his business trip. He would only be away for a week, so it wasn't too much to ask that Shizuka wait a few days until Yokio could accompany her on their walks. But the week dragged by, and the three canines were getting restless. Shizuka did take them out on short walks around her immediate neighborhood as often as she could, but they were not so easily satisfied. The trio were used to more freedom, especially since Shizuka took them out for walks where they were so far removed from people that it was safe for them to be taken off their leashes for a swim in the many waterways around Florida. And Shizuka herself was starting to get frustrated too. She and her dogs were out and about on most days, so an entire week spent almost entirely indoors made them all miserable. When she got up on Friday morning, Shizuka decided enough was enough. She wasn't going to hide inside her house from a few lizards. She'd seen plenty of them before, and her mutts were more than capable of warning her and protecting her if anything were to happen to her. When she grabbed the leashes, Momo, Paco, and Junior were beside themselves with joy. They didn't wait for Shizuka's command. They jumped into the back of the car the moment she opened the door for them. They yipped and howled for the whole 15-minute drive until they reached Silver Lakes. Shizuka parked her car in the lot and walked the happy trio on their leashes until they were well out of sight of people. Before long, the canines were all soaking wet, covered in mud, and properly winded. Every now and then, Shizuka threw a rubber ball for them to catch and bring back to her. Eventually, they reached a good-sized pond. The dogs were nearly dry from the dip they took in a smaller pond some ways back, and Shizuka thought it would be a good idea to allow them one last swim before heading back to the car. They could dry off again on the walk back. The day was so hot that they'd probably be completely dry when they reached the parking lot again. She hurled the ball into the pond, and the dogs took off after it. But Paco, who reached the water's edge first, came to a skidding halt. The other two braked to a stop behind him, too. They whined and pawed nervously at the muddy bank, unwilling to go inside after their prized ball. Shizuka sighed. She'd seen this behavior before when they came across snakes. The dogs always whined and paced around nervously when they came across reptiles. Luckily, Shizuka had none of the same reservations about snakes. Once she chased the thing off, the dogs would go in and get the ball so that they could start their walk back. But after inspecting the bank, Shizuka couldn't find any signs of snakes or lizards, and she didn't see any gators resting in the water either. She decided that the three dogs were just tired. After all, they'd been out running for more than two hours by now. So she stepped into the water. The ball had drifted close to the bank, and she only had to go up to her knees before she could reach it. But Shizuka missed the predator hiding in the weeds, only a few feet away from where she stepped into the mucky water. Her dogs hadn't seen anything either, but they sure smelled it in the vicinity. When their master took those first two steps into the pond, they let out a chorus of howls to get her to come back. Shizuka took another step, her hand already reaching for the yellow sphere. But just as her hand closed around the ball, there was an almighty splash from behind her. She didn't even have the chance to turn around before almost a half a ton worth of reptilian body knocked her head first into the dark water. From behind the weeds, the very 12-foot alligator that witnesses had shared on social media propelled out at the prey that had so willingly walked right into its territory. It was planning on waiting for one of the dogs to come close enough to strike, but it wasn't going to say no to the much larger target that walked in instead. As soon as Shizuka's body was submerged, Momo jumped in after her. But as soon as the thing bowled her over, it had wrapped its scaly body around her before she could claw her way to the bank. When Momo reached his favorite human, she was already in the throes of the alligator's fatal death roll. He paddled in and tried to claw onto the barreling lizard's body, but a heavy tail struck him down. In mid-turn, the gator's jaws glanced off his ribcage. Momo retreated, bleeding heavily from the open gash on his ribs. In the water, Shizuka had not even had the chance to catch some air. 
Once the animal had her in its grip, she was consumed by an impossibly strong pressure from all sides. What little air she did have in her lungs was expelled by the force and the intense spinning through the deep. She felt her chest shatter under the immense compression just before she lost consciousness. Once her body went limp, the animal swam Shizuka away to find a more secluded spot on the other side of the pool. But Momo, Paco, and Junior were relentless. They continued to make an immense amount of noise for an hour before someone finally came by. An older man out for a mid-morning stroll saw the commotion on the banks. By now, Momo was heaving and coughing from the constant barking and the stress it placed on the bite mark that had also bruised his ribs. The man who came upon the scene immediately put the pieces together. All three dogs were wearing collars. They were obviously well cared for, and there was no sign of their owner in sight. He'd also spotted a car in the parking lot, so there must have been a person with the dogs at some point. And then, on the other side of the pond, he saw the scaly back of a massive alligator slide into the water, disappearing below the surface when he came closer to investigate. He called the authorities, and they arrived within minutes of the call. While animal control rounded up the panicked dogs, police ran the car's plates and discovered that it belonged to the Matsukas. The phone call to Yokio sent chills up his spine. Despite his warnings, Shizuka had gone out anyway, and he knew in his gut that the police were probably right. If it wasn't an alligator, then she'd possibly drowned in some other way. He got on the earliest flight he could catch and arrived back in Florida that very night, just as authorities announced that they had found Shizuka's remains. She was missing an arm, and a large chunk was torn out of her midriff. It took another three days after the discovery to finally catch the beast that killed Shizuka. The parts of Shizuka that were missing from her body were found in the animal's stomach and were sent to the funeral home so that they could be buried with the rest of her in a closed casket service. The church that hosted Shizuka Mitsuka's funeral had to bring in extra seats to accommodate everyone that showed up. Her good deeds did not stop at saving animals. Shizuka touched every life she came into contact with, and her son, Katana, made sure that she would get her biggest wish after all. He opened the Shizuka's Plan Foundation, just like Shizuka always wanted before meeting her terrifying final affliction. Gardening is typically a risk-free hobby, one which can be enjoyed in retirement. But when it's performed on a lakeside in Florida, it suddenly becomes a risky business, as some people found out when they witnessed their 80-year-old neighbor slip into the alligator-infested water right in front of their eyes. At the Boca Royale Golf and Country Club in South Sarasota County, Florida, deadly predators lurked in the on-site lakes and ponds. Covering an area of 1,000 acres, the country club includes a golf course, nature preserves, and is home to more than 1,000 families. Living there also meant sharing your backyard with some of America's most deadly predators, alligators. Rosemarie Weigand had spent her entire life serving others. She worked in the nursing field in hospitals and medical offices before settling down in Florida to retire. Little did she know that it would turn out to be her premature resting place. Alligators are known to inhabit every body of fresh water in Florida. Walking besides lakes or ponds in the state is considered dangerous. There are signs along most waterways warning people to stay away from the edge. Every year, dogs that leap into the water are taken by the reptiles as they look similar to their mammalian prey such as muskrats, raccoons, and small deer but occasionally they consider humans as prey and take an opportunity when it presents itself. On Friday, July 15, 2022, 80-year-old Rose Marie was doing something that was not normally considered dangerous, gardening. Her property overlooked one of the lakes at the country club. Residents knew alligators lived in the pond. Sometimes they would come out onto dry land and bask in the sun. Other times, people could spot their knobbly bodies protruding through the water's surface like floating logs. They moved from pond to pond, sometimes crossing the road to do so, but they had never caused any problems before. 
people knew they were there, and they knew they must respect them and avoid them. Rose Marie and her husband Edward had always maintained their garden impeccably. Gardening was one of Rose Marie's many hobbies, alongside reading, swimming, baking, and even yoga, which she practiced at the Englewood YMCA. The couple had lived there in Boca Royale for 20 years and were known to local residents. They were friendly and likable, welcoming new faces to the gated community. When Edward passed away two years before, Rosemary continued the hard work in the garden, something that would soon prove fatal for her. On the evening of July 15th, she was pulling weeds out of the grassy bank in her garden. Her back was turned to the water. It was around 7.45 p.m. The air was warm and still. The sounds from the neighbors drifted over the water, the roar of a car rolling by in the quiet neighborhood, people mowing their grass. It was a regular evening. Two alligators floated in the lake a short distance away from Rosemarie's property. Locals had watched them grow over the years. One neighbor had moved in when the alligators were just four feet long but now they were considerably larger than that and posed a real threat to anyone entering the water. Residents knew to keep their dogs on a leash. That evening, the two resident alligators were largely hidden by the rushes and reeds lining the bank, but their senses were always alert. They were opportunistic hunters, always on the search for an easy meal, always ready to react. When Rose tugged on a particularly stubborn weed in the bank of her lawn, it suddenly gave way. She stumbled backwards, lost her footing, and she was sent flying into the water. She landed with a loud splash. Shaken and surprised, she scrambled to right herself and climb out of the pond. She fumbled in the water, kicking and splashing furiously, but she didn't realize that she was just moments away from death, and she didn't see what was behind her. Some neighbors who had seen Rosemarie fall into the water thought that she had been walking in her garden when she had suddenly fallen. They suspected that she may have experienced some kind of medical episode, which caused her to collapse and fall into the lake. Either way, the loud splash alerted neighbors to the danger she was in, but they weren't the only ones to notice the 80-year-old lying vulnerable in the water. All the commotion had alerted the two alligators to her struggle. Instinct kicked in, and they swam purposefully towards her. A prey animal in distress was the easiest of targets, and they homed in. Their eyes were sharp, their movements smooth as they glided along the surface of the lake, propelled by their muscular tails. From the other side of the water, residents spotted the telltale outlines of the two large alligators swimming towards the woman. A small bow wave in front of their rounded snouts, their dark bodies, shadows beneath the water's surface. They yelled at Rosemarie to hurry and get out of the lake, but before she could escape the water, Rose was firstly trying to keep herself afloat. The shock of the cold water had taken her breath away, and she seemed to be having trouble keeping her head above water. Then she kicked for the side and reached out with her hands, but before she could make it, the alligators grabbed hold of her. She let out a cry as she was pulled backwards, away from the safety of dry land. The alligators' teeth ripped through her skin, and their jaws clamped down around her legs, both reptiles attacking simultaneously. The elderly lady didn't stand a chance as she was pulled under the water. Horrified onlookers immediately rushed to the lakeside and dialed for the emergency services. 911, what's the location of the emergency? Help. A lady just drowned. Okay, okay, I'm sir, what is your address? I was playing the sick hole, and this lady was across the water. Looked like she was trimming the edge, and she fell in. She was screaming. I tried to get to her, and she went under. I just couldn't find her. I'm walking over there now. Okay. Yeah, I can see the gator floating in the water, so I'm not going. Like, so I'm not going in there. There's something floating around here now. Oh my God, is that her? She tried to fight back. She tried to pull herself free, but the enormous reptiles, one measuring eight foot ten inches long and the other seven foot seven inches, were too powerful. With a bite force of more than 2,000 PSI, the alligators weren't letting go. They readjusted their grip and rolled rows over and over. 
the force from the attack, dislocated Rosa's neck and bruised her spinal column. She was gone within a matter of seconds. There was nothing anyone could have done. And although her final moments will play out in the minds of those who witness them, in reality, the whole thing happened in less than a minute. It was so quick, the raw power of the alligator's attack was brutal and deadly. Hearing the commotion, other neighbors rushed to the scene. They found Rose face down in the water. The emergency services arrived at 8.15 p.m. and she was pulled from the lake. Tragically, she was pronounced dead at the scene. It was an incredible shock for the community and for all who knew Rose Marie. She had died in the most horrific way imaginable, just feet from her own home. Her family had already been through so much, having lost Edward just two years earlier, and now they had to say goodbye to Rose Marie as well. The close-knit community was shaken. To have such a terrible attack happen just yards from their own homes really brought home just how dangerous the water can be. An expert local trapper was called in and caught the two alligators. They were relocated elsewhere. Other alligators in the gated community were also removed to reassure residents that those responsible were no longer in the area. But it won't be long before the lakes are occupied by alligators once more, as they flourish in Florida's tropical climate. Removing one only makes room for another to occupy the space. Every year, there are around six or seven unprovoked alligator attacks in the state of Florida. Between 1948 and 2021, there were 26 fatalities. Although there is a very real threat from alligators in Florida, the chances of being bitten by one is slim. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, which manages the state's fish and wildlife resources, chances are only 3.1 million to one. But if you're that one, you may end up meeting your terrifying final affliction. Matt and Melissa Graves from Elkhorn, Nebraska had decided to take their children on the holiday of a lifetime. After months of excitement building in the household, the vacation had finally arrived and they headed to Florida in June 2016. Their destination, Disney World, Orlando. After experiencing some of the very best rides in the world, the family headed down to the relative quiet of the Seven Seas Lagoon one evening. Seven Seas was a man-made lagoon that offered boating and fishing experiences. There were a number of people walking along the shores, running on the beaches, and fishing from a couple of boats. Although it was late for the children, around 8.30 p.m., Matt and Melissa decided that it was their holidays, that they would stay up this once. On the shores of the lake, there was an outdoor movie experience for them to enjoy. It was something that they had never done before. Matt and Melissa sat and watched the movie, but as the children were so young, they weren't interested in what was on the big screen. Instead, they played on the beach, digging up the sand and splashing in the water. Matt and Melissa had packed with them a bucket and spade. They pulled them out of their bag and handed them to the children. Two-year-old Lane jumped up and down excitedly, toddling onto the sand that ran down to the edge of the lake. He grabbed the bucket from his older sister and began filling it up with sand. His parents helped him turn the bucket over, tap it three times, and then lift it up to reveal a sandcastle. Lane squealed in delight and the family did this over and over. After some considerable time playing in the sand, Matt and Melissa decided that it was getting late and time to go. When they got up to leave, Lane cried out in defiance. His parents looked at each other. They decided to give in to their toddler's demands and stay a little longer. What harm could it do? When it came time to dig the trench around the mound of sandcastles, Lane picked up the bucket once more and ran to the lake. Wading into the ankle-deep water, Matt and Melissa watched on as he splashed into the shallows. He patted his feet up and down, looking down as his toes sank into the muddy, sandy substrate. Then, the two-year-old bent over and scooped up a bucket of water to take back to the moat they were building. Suddenly, and without warning, there was a huge commotion. In an instant, their happy, playful toddler, who was giggling and grinning, was snatched by an alligator, just feet from his family. Matt leapt up from the sand. He jumped onto the alligator, wrestling it into the water. The alligator had its jaws wrapped around Lane's head. Matt thrust his hand into the alligator's mouth. He tried desperately to pry them open, but the great beast thrashed around, throwing Matt off of its back. 
In the frantic commotion, Matt claims that another alligator went for him in a frenzied attack. It is unclear whether the minor injuries he suffered were from the alligator that took Lane or from a second one joining in on the attack. No sooner than it had happened, the alligator vanished, sinking beneath the water's surface. In a moment of shock and terror, the family were forced to watch their young son being dragged underwater by the terrifying seven-foot beast. In those first heart-stopping seconds, Matt and Melissa ran into the water where their boy had been dragged under. A lifeguard was alerted and came running to the scene. The water was murky and brown. Matt dived under the water again and again, scrambling about with his hands to feel for any sign of their son. He couldn't see a thing. He couldn't feel anything. Every time he reached out, all he did was grab fistfuls of the squelchy, muddy lake's bottom. As he came up for air, he saw Melissa frantically rushing through the shallows, screaming and yelling. Lane made for easy prey. He was only 37 inches tall and weighed 30 pounds. Standing defenseless in the shallows, he was an easy target. Alligators are ambush hunters. They are apex predators in their environment. They typically take fish, turtles, muskrats, birds, and deer. Unlike their crocodile cousins, they are typically less aggressive and it is rare for them to attack humans. But when they do, they rely on the element of surprise and their bite force. The pressure from an alligator's bite is comparable in pressure to the weight of a small pickup truck. Onlookers at the lagoon could do nothing but watch in absolute horror, hoping upon hope that the boy would somehow resurface. But with each passing minute, their hopes were dashed. Emergency services arrived on the scene within minutes. Jumping into a boat, they scoured the lake. A massive search operation involving over 50 officers was initiated and devastatingly, Orange County divers came across Lane the following afternoon, 17 hours after the attack. He was lying limp and lifeless in just six feet of water. Submerged, he had been left by the alligator only yards from where he had been taken. Heartbreakingly, he was just feet from where Matt and Melissa had frantically searched for him. But the muddy waters churned up by the commotion in the water made it impossible to see below the surface. Lane's body was pulled from the water, carried back to the beach and into the arms of his devastated mother. Rescuers pronounced him dead at the scene. Wildlife officers concluded that although Lane had suffered trauma to his head and neck, he had drowned when the alligator had dragged him into the water. There were only a couple of puncture wounds where the alligator had grabbed him. His body had been untouched after the attack. It is likely that the action of Matt jumping onto the alligator and attempting to free his son from its powerful grip had startled the predator, and after dragging the boy underwater, it had then let go. Lake Kissimmee near Orlando has the second biggest populations of alligators in Florida. It is home to almost 2,000. Their large numbers force some individuals to look elsewhere for food and territory to avoid competition. Some make it into recreational lakes frequented by locals and tourists alike. Following the devastating incident, officers captured and euthanized six alligators from the lagoon. When the alligators were examined, their stomachs were empty, suggesting that the reptiles inhabiting the Disney Lagoon were hungry. The attack on Lane had been predatory. His actions had not provoked the alligator in any way. He was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. Since June 2016, Disney World has erected warning signs along the edges of the lagoon, warning tourists of the presence of alligators. Although alligator attacks in Florida are rare, they do occur and they have devastating consequences. Lane was simply enjoying his vacation with the people who loved him most in the world. The alligator was simply taking advantage of an opportunity, one that resulted in Lane Graves' terrifying final affliction. Florida is famous around the world for their alligators. It is theorized that they live in almost all freshwater bodies in the state. In fact, it is believed that there are roughly 1.25 million of the animals living in Florida. Their populations are so big that interactions between humans and alligators are fairly common. Since 1948, there have been over 450 reported attacks, and this number is set to rise, especially when people take their small pets to the alligator's home. We have all heard the inspiring stories of animals saving humans, from whales that protect swimmers from sharks, or dogs protecting their owners from dangerous animals. What most people fail to realize is that humans will usually do the same for their pets, even to their own peril. 
Many pet owners would do anything for their animals, and there are stories across the world of people going above and beyond for their beloved furry friends. Humans are surprisingly ready to risk their lives for their pets, and some have even made the ultimate sacrifice in the hopes of saving their tiny family members. The Floridian retirement complex known as Spanish Lakes hit the headlines in 2023 for all the wrong reasons. These retirement homes prided themselves on keeping their residents happy and active with a wide range of activities for them to pick from, including swimming and golf. In addition, they boast 24 lakes on their property for the residents to sail on or simply walk around during their daily activities. While these lakes were created to help the mental and physical health of the people living there, they never thought that something could be living in them something that was waiting to snack on some retirees. In February 2023, Gloria Serge had been living at Spanish Lakes for some time. She knew the area very well and had a few friends within the small community in Florida where they would all keep an eye on each other. Despite the people that she knew, her favorite companion was undoubtedly her small dog named Trooper. He had been living with her since she moved into the complex and she enjoyed being able to take him for walks in such a beautifully scenic place, something that she was rarely able to do when she lived alone. After her husband died, she decided that it would be best for her to move in around other people rather than live in the isolation that widowhood tends to accompany. She was grateful to have such a well-behaved dog to keep her company during her days and was excited to take him out on that fateful day. Although they say that a breath of fresh air is good for you, Gloria sadly didn't know what awaited her as she set out for her daily dog walk. That afternoon, Gloria left her apartment as usual with Trooper running ahead of her on the leash. She planned to walk around the lakes nearest her home as she decided that they would be the most beautiful and it would be easy for her to return home if she started to feel tired. She set off, determined to make it around the first lake taking in her surroundings and feeling particularly happy to be living amongst such stunning natural scenery. She waved to some of her neighbors as she got closer to the water's edge, looking across to the other side and readying herself for the long walk ahead. In her increasingly old age, she had been finding it more and more difficult to complete an entire lap of the lake. But Trooper's enthusiasm and love of being outdoors fueled her to try harder each day. As she slowly made her way around the lake, she had no idea that she was being watched from a distance. 100 feet away from her, on the other side of the water, a 10-foot alligator had spotted the pair walking close to the edge and decided that one of them would make an easy target. It clambered into the murky water and began to stalk Gloria and Trooper, who continued with their walk, oblivious to what was watching them. It stealthily approached them but hung back just enough to stay out of sight, watching the pensioner and her dog as they continued their leisurely afternoon. It waited for its best moment and then leapt from the water, trying to grab onto Trooper and drag him into the water. But Gloria wouldn't allow it. She now had to decide who would survive this attack, her dog or herself. As Gloria saw the huge beast run at her from the water, she knew what she had to do. Her tiny dog was oblivious to the attack as she swung him out of the way of the alligator's jaws and threw him away from danger, but they weren't safe yet. Seeing that its initial target had been pulled away from its grasp, the reptile turned on Gloria instead, seizing her by the leg and dragging her to the ground. She screamed out for help as she was quickly dragged into the water, waving her arms desperately to catch the attention of any of her nearby neighbors. The huge alligator had a firm grip on her leg and gave no hint of letting go while she was still alive. She knew she only had a limited amount of time before it would be too late. Trooper was barking viciously on the grass as he watched his owner slip under the water, but there was nothing that such a small dog could do to help. Ultimately, Gloria had saved her dog's life by sacrificing her own. One of her neighbors, 76-year-old Carol Thomas, overheard the commotion and saw Gloria being pulled into the water by an alligator nearly twice her size. Panicking, the retiree quickly called the police. Carol ran outside while holding the phone and grabbed a pole from her garden as she tried to help. 
When she got there, she felt as though her heart had stopped as the woman in the water was no longer moving, only floating on the surface as she was being tugged and pulled by the alligator. Carol began to maneuver the pole towards Gloria, hoping against hope that she could grab it and then be pulled to safety, but sadly it was already too late. Gloria was dead, and the alligator quickly snatched away her body, leaving Carol to watch as the body was pulled under the murky water. When the authorities arrived, there was a crowd of people around the lake as other people living in the complex came to learn of the terrible event that had happened on their doorsteps. They were terrified. They walked the same path every day and were thinking about how it could have been any one of them. They had no idea there was even an alligator in their lake and were shocked that no one had ever noticed such a large beast sharing the same area as them. Shortly after her death, Gloria's body was recovered from the water, her injuries extensive across her entire body as the alligator attempted to begin to eat her before she was brought out of the water. There was only one thing left to do, capture the alligator. Wildlife experts were sent to find the animal and bring it from the lake so that they could decide what to do with it. After a long search, they found it hiding at the bottom of the lake, its belly full. After it was captured, the experts were able to measure the massive animal at 10 feet long. After measuring the gator, they took it away to be killed, as it was decided that an animal that size could not continue living in the lake, certainly not after it had begun to attack the residents of the retirement complex. The owners of the complex then began an extermination effort to make sure that their residents were safe. No one would want to leave their family members in their care if they knew there was a risk of them suffering the same fate as Gloria. They were able to clear as many of the lakes as possible and relocated all of the other reptiles that they found. Unfortunately for Gloria, she was the third alligator victim in Florida in the last six months, leading authorities to warn locals to stay away from large bodies of water, especially when walking with their pets. Gloria proved to everyone what people would do to save their animals. Luckily for Trooper, he survived the whole ordeal and was eventually sent to live with Gloria's family, his life saved from the jaws of an alligator by a woman who would protect him up until her very last breath, up until her terrifying final affliction.